Do you feel paralyzed by the narcissist? Where you don't want to stay, but you just can't leave. You feel paralyzed. You feel like a prisoner. You feel bound. You feel like you're a hostage, like you are being killed very slowly and you just can't move. And it almost feels like a nightmare. You are not alone. Hi, I'm Minette and welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do hit the subscribe button. So I want to begin first with an analogy of the frog in the pot of water. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but uh, frogs are amphibious. They're amphibians, right? And so they, uh, they adapt to whatever temperature they're surrounded by. So whether it's air temperature or water temperature, the, whatever the temperature of their, the ambient uh, air around them or the water, they adapt to that temperature. Now, the story goes like this. There was a frog one time who found himself in a pot of water on the stove and the flame was set on low. So the water was kind of warm and comfortable for the frog and it adapted itself, its body temperature to the temperature of the water. Well, as the fire continued to warm up the water, the frog would keep moderating its temperature by matching the temperature of the water. Well, it was very gradual, but it, the water temperature started to get higher and higher and hotter and hotter. But the frog continued to successfully adapt its body temperature. However, it reached a point where the frog realized that the water was way too hot for him to match and it couldn't move. It was paralyzed and in his head, he knew he had to get out of that water or he would die and be killed slowly. And the story goes is that because the frog waited too long to jump out of the pot of water, he ultimately died. What is the correlation? What does this story have to do with being paralyzed by the narcissist? Well, we're all familiar with the love bomb bombing initially that the narcissist does to it's his victims, his or her victims. And, you know, here's the thing. If the, the narcissist is not going to show his or her ugly to you right off the bat, or you'd run away, you know, screaming, right? So they do the love bombing, and it's all condensed version of uh, getting to know somebody, dating them, falling in love, and doing loving things, only condensed in a small frame of time and that's to get you hooked to them. So when they start to do the derailing or devaluating or uh, all those techniques that we're familiar with now where they ghost you and so forth, it's in small bits at first. At the beginning, you know, they test the waters, so to speak, of what, how much you'll tolerate and if you have a lot of boundaries, it may take a long time for them to work their derailment with you. But know this, they are interjecting that control and manipulation by uh, doing all those demeaning and belittling things to you, but in portions that they feel you could handle and still stay with them. And it's a gradual process, this control and manipulation and testing the waters and seeing how far they could go. And you think that, oh, well, wow, you know what, we're, we're, we're still together. We're working out our differences. We're, we're, we're making it, we're, we're hanging in there. But that's not how the narcissist is seeing this at all. 
he or she is seeing this as working you and uh, railing you in uh, with their push-pull, push-pull, with their um, uh, setting things up, strategizing, doing things behind the scene in the back end where you can't, you know, we don't have eyes behind our head, right? So we're not seeing what they're doing behind us in the back end, but they're doing it. And if you, if you are not sharp on the strategies of the narcissist, it can creep up the destruction and the pain and suffering that they're constantly injecting you with is going to eventually um, catch up to you to where you go, wait a minute, this water's too hot. And you realize that you need to get out of the situationship with the narcissist because you see that things aren't getting better, things continue actually to get worse, and you're starting to feel trapped. You're starting to feel bound. But at this point, you've been so belittled, your, your self-worth has gone downstream, um, your, your uh, boundaries have been slowly chiseled away at, and you are living in fear. You don't even recognize the person you've become, and you're paralyzed. You don't want to stay but you feel like you have no resources anymore. You feel like you've lost any sense of your own self-control over your own life because it's been whittled away at over time with this, the strategies and the, the loop, the processing that the narcissist does with his or her victims. So that is the paralysis that the narcissist causes on the empath, that good-hearted person, that Christian man or woman who wants to do good, who wants to work out relationships, who wants to um, fight for the relationship, hang in there, and we're going to make this work, right? But in the end, you're realizing you're the only one who's trying to make the relationship work. And it's one-sided, but now, you feel like you are in hot water like the frog and now you're so frustrated, you're so defeated, you're so exhausted, you feel like you have no inner resources left. But I'm here to tell you that you do. You absolutely do, but you, you, you cannot trust in yourself right now because you are at a very weakened place you need to seek out a higher power than yourself and that's God Almighty and there's a wonderful verse in God's Word that says 1st John chapter 1 verse 5 this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you God is light in him there is no darkness at all. So this is your time to turn to your heavenly Father, to turn to God Almighty, who is light. In him is no darkness at all. He's going to rescue you from the darkness that you're in with the narcissist. And when you recognize that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for, that it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. When you are interacting with a narcissist whose intention is to slowly destroy you, to inject you with so much pain and suffering, that's darkness. That's not light, that's darkness. And they've nearly put out your flame because now it, you, you've, you've climbed uphill for so long, you've been in that pot of hot water for so long, you're paralyzed. But I'm here to say, God is going to help you. You need to reach out to him. 
So you don't feel strong. You feel very weak right now. I get it. But in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we're, we can't rely on our strength because we've been weakened. Right now, we need Holy Scripture to build us back up again, to remind us of who we are, who we still are, and how we have just been um, separated out by the narcissist and uh, attacked and weakened, but no more. You are seeking help and watching this video, you know there's an answer because you're going to tap into the higher power and that's God Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're going to rely on the power of the Lord to be our strength. And I understand that you may be at a place right now where you're crying out. You, you just have all of this pent up pain and uh, even anger and confusion. There's all this chaos and you don't know where to begin. You don't know where to start, but start with God and stay with God and Jesus Christ. And it says in Hebrews chapter four, verse 16, let us come boldly before God's throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. This is your time of need. And God is says, come boldly, come boldly because you're his child and you have his Holy Spirit in you. And he beckons you, welcomes you, urges you, encourages you to come boldly before his throne of grace so we can obtain mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. And these are very needful times for us when we feel this trapped and this paralyzed with the narcissist. You see, the narcissist wants you to feel like you are powerless. He wants, he has taken a long time with you to build up this image where of him or herself, where they are all powerful, where they have all the answers that you're not smart enough to think on your own. You need that person, the narcissist. Um, you can't make decisions on your own. You need to check in with the narcissist and they are just so powerful in their minds, right? Um, but they've also brainwashed their victim many times. And it's, like I said, gradual over time. You don't even know or realize that what's being done. But you know what? It says in John chapter eight, verse 32, and the truth shall set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And the more you rely on scripture, Holy Bible, God's word to enlighten you. See, it's great that you are seeking out um, information on narcissistic abuse and the MO of the narcissist. So you are aware and in the awareness, right? It, you have an awakening and you're like, oh my gosh, so that's what was going on. But you need more than that. And I needed more than that. And that's why I turned to Holy Scripture. And uh, when once you turn to Holy Scripture, you get what I call the enlightenment. So you have the awakening, but that's not enough. When you're dealing with a narcissist, we, we are dealing on a higher level than just flesh and blood, as we shared in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, right? Uh, it is a spiritual battle. So you need that enlightenment from God's holy word to help to free you, to get you out of that paralyzed state so that you can be rescued by God Almighty's amazing grace and mercy and that you can free yourself out of the ties and the bondage 
that the narcissist has tried to put you in and is trying to ultimately destroy you. So getting back to how the narcissist thinks he's or she's all powerful over you, they're not. They're listening to devilish voices in their ear. They're being orchestrated by devil spirits, by darkness. And what they don't want you to know is the following, in the following verse I'm going to read to you. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And where it says overcome them, you have overcome them, that word them is referring to the devil spirits. You have overcome them and greater. And how do you over, how did you overcome them? Well, I'll tell you how you overcame them by confessing Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and hath believed in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You get born again of Holy Spirit and have eternal life, and you have the power of God in Christ in you. So you have overcome the devil spirits by getting born again, and greater is he, the God in Christ in you now, right? than he that is in the world. And that includes the narcissist that hears those devilish whispers that is driven by devilish influences because what they do to their victims is total darkness. It's so sinister and it's so diabolical yeah, so they don't want you to know that you have the power over them. So now that you are arming yourself with Scripture, with God's Word, do you see just how you're going to make your escape and let the Word of God rescue you and regain your power? You never lost the power. It's in you, but the power of knowing scripture and manifesting that scripture and believing that scripture and walking with, with that energy and that conviction and with peace, knowing full well on a spiritual level the type of situation you've been in with the narcissist. And it says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And that is how you're going to escape the paralysis of the narcissist and remove yourself from that situation, not just physically, because I know of the trauma, I know of the hurt and the pain, but remove yourself and heal yourself mentally and spiritually and emotionally and I want to leave you with this also is that there's a verse in Matthew chapter 5 verses 44 and 45 and in it it talks about praying for those who despitefully use you and persecute you now that may seem surprising like really now I need to pray for the narcissist well, here's two things that that does. Number one, it helps to heal you. When you have forgiven the narcissist and you are now praying for them because you know the, the, the horrible state they're in, they're in a horrible place in their life and they've been at it for years and years and years. But you praying, number one, helps to get that healing going in your heart. And number two, you're helping that narcissist on a higher level, a spiritual level, because you're now praying for them. And if there's, you've done everything you can with the narcissist and for the narcissist, 
you know, you're now you're praying on a spiritual level. You're 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 helping them that way. And you know what? Never say never because maybe somewhere down the road it could happen that the narcissist may want to be helped. But we need to recognize that that it has to come from within them. They have to want that. So you've done your job, you've done your work, you're no longer attached to that situation ship and you're on your road and your way to healing with Holy Scripture and relying and trusting in God to give you peace and strength and you're praying for the narcissist. And that is a truly wonderful thing where you can, when you can get to that point and that place of spirituality, um, you get rewarded by a Heavenly Father for all eternity. You really do. So if you enjoyed this, if it helped you at all, do hit the like button and be sure to hit the subscribe button. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time that I put out a video. And if you have any comments, do tell me how you how scripture rescued you from the paralysis of the narcissist. Share with the community so that we are encouraged together on a spiritual level and share this video with others that you know are also suffering from narcissistic abuse. And until next time, walk in peace and stay blessed in your heart.